The Battle of Wakefield took place outside the walls of Sandal Castle on the 30th of December 1460. Today, the castle is a ruin, the victim of the outcome of a later conflict. In 1460, it was the stronghold of Richard Plantagenet, Duke of York and grandson to King Edward III. At the time of the battle, he was the Lord Protector of England, the effective head of state. He held this position because of the mental instability of the king, Henry VI. The Wars of the Roses broke out in response to the ineffective rule of that king and the loss of English territories in France. In December 1460, Richard Plantagenet was ensconced behind the walls of Sandal Castle. In the meantime, forces loyal to Henry VI Queen, Margaret of Anjou, marched on Sandal Castle from the nearby castle at Pontefract. There's much speculation about why Richard left the safety of the castle to attack the much larger force outside. Ineptitude on the part of Duke Richard is blamed by some, while others argue that such an experienced military commander must have had a very good reason to leave the safety of his castle walls. In the end, we'll probably never know for sure. What we do know is that his forces left the castle and were annihilated. We also know that Richard himself was killed in this battle. We recall the event in the mnemonic to remember the spectrum. Richard of York gave battle in vain. Some people also suggest that it was the origin of the nursery rhyme, the grand old Duke of York. This is the location of the gatehouse and drawbridge. It was through this gate that the Duke and his men passed to engage the Lancastrian forces arrayed against them. It suggested that they took a route down Menegates Lane, which you can still do today. This is Menegates Lane as it appears today, heading towards the location of the field of battle. In the distance, you can see the spire of Wakefield Cathedral. The original church on the site was built in Saxon time. At the time of the battle, a Norman church occupied the location. Up ahead, you can see a meander of the River Calder as it flows towards Wakefield. That's thought to be where part of the Lancastrian army on York's left moved to engage in as part of a pincer movement. This is Castle Grove Park. This is where the other part of the pincer movement on York's right is thought to have originated. Notice the distinctive ridge and furrow topography. This is the result of the way open fields were ploughed during the Middle Ages. This is a view from the castle of Portobello Estate, with Wakefield in the background. This is where much of the fighting would have taken place. Fighting would also have taken place on Castle Grove Park. The monument to mark the place where he fell is directly ahead, between the trees and the building. There's a carving of Richard in the upper part of the monument. The inscription reads, Richard Plantagenet, Duke of York, fighting for the cause of the White Rose, fell on this spot in the Battle of Wakefield, December 30, 1460. Survivors, including Duke Richard's second son, 12-year-old Edmund, Earl of Rutland, fled in the direction of Wakefield. Perhaps the retreating Yorkist troops were trying to get across the Calder and then disperse into the town to evade capture. Their crossing point still exists. This is the medieval Wakefield Bridge. The remnants of the routed Yorkist army would have been heading towards the bridge from that direction at the head. There's a medieval chapel on the bridge. This is the Chantry Chapel of St Mary the Virgin, one of the few surviving bridge chapels in England. It is in this area that Edmund the second son of Richard of York is thought to have been killed. The tragic episode that was the Wars of the Roses ended only when a new dynasty, that of the Tudors, took power under Henry VII. But that would be over two decades away. <laughs>